Hey friends, it's your old pal Fluco here. I got something special for you here today. A half hour long presentation of me painting my latest piece, Let's Get It. This is the longest I've spent on a painting in a long time, so I'm really glad I decided to film this for you guys. So with all my paintings, I always work in layers. As you can see here, I'm starting with the background and I usually work my way up to the foreground. So the thing I almost always start with is the sky, because that's usually the farthest thing in the background. Which is what I'm doing here, getting in uh, some blues and some blacks, just working it together. I almost always use a big uh, fluffy brush for this part. And I don't want to put too much paint on because it just gets kind of messy. So you just want to put just enough and it actually does this little fanning blending thing that you kind of wanted to do. So this part usually takes a little while, just adding in more and more color over time, building it up, add some blue and put some black in, bring some more blue back in. You just got to work at it. So now that my background's finally done, I can see here I'm starting to add in the buildings. This part is super, super tedious because you're going to want to get your angles all right, especially if you're doing what I'm doing where I've got a low angle fisheye lens type thing looking up. So I actually, uh, I didn't film this part, but I did put some pencil on here where I had a ruler out and everything. I was trying to at least roughly sketch these buildings in here just uh, so I didn't paint over top of more of the sky than I had to. Once again, this is just another one of the things, it just takes time. You just work at it, chip away, filling in little section by little section. For this one, I've got a big um, flat brush here because at least it has some nice edges on it. And since buildings are all mostly straight, I just figured it would be better than a round brush. See, I'm working on the left side here. Just You just start off rough. Like, don't think you're going to just instantly get something that looks like something right away. I like to build everything up. I think of paintings as kind of like a sculpture where they never look good until the end <laughs> when you've got all your details and stuff in there. But for this, you just want to get some nice color blending going on. So I use bigger brushes. I use a fair bit amount of paint just to get everything looking all nice. And then you get this painterly effect too. So this is all just me putting in some rough backgrounds and uh, you'll see in later stages, we start to add detail over top and all of a sudden it all starts to come together. I think this is my one of my favorite parts though, because you can almost mindlessly just push these colors around. It's pretty relaxing to get some cool tunes going. And slowly see it coming together here, just blending and shading, just roughing it in like nothing too special here. <laughs> working on the astronaut guy now, just working it. Get the highlights in, get the shadows in. With him, I usually start with a big solid color on him. But uh, this painting is so big that um, I almost wanted to save some time and instead of layering things up, I was just starting with certain colors on certain parts. Like you can see I did the left side of them first, which is all yellow. And then I knew the right side of them was going to be blue. So I'm just starting off with the blue and darker colors there where normally I would do what I do with the background where I just put a solid median color on there first and then add things over top. But I'm just trying to save some time with this one. And I knew since this was going to be yellow, it's a brighter color, so I didn't want to put anything too dark underneath because I really wanted that yellow to pop. Just working it in. I usually use black for shadows, but um, right now I'm using a color that's not so black. It's almost like a bluish black. So that when I do put in some uh, black when I'm done, it really adds some contrast to everything. Here I'm working on the door of the cab. I got this thing all uh, taped off. I figured it would save some time. Especially if I'm doing these big, big gradients, I don't want to mess up other parts of my painting that I've already got down. And I'm using these big, wide foam brushes for this. They seem to do the trick. Just getting the window frame in here. Keep in mind, I have a rough idea in my head of what I'm doing here, and I, sometimes it's kind of tricky because you get so impatient where you're like, I already know what it's supposed to look like, why can't it just look like that? That's why it helps to kind of put on some relaxing music almost, because <laughs> uh, this definitely takes a while, you're going to want to relax. <laughs> Don't get all antsy like me, you'll end up ruining sections of your painting just because you're trying to force it. Originally I was just going to use yellow and orange as my two main colors for these highlights and everything, but um, 
At the last minute, I kind of added some red in with those, and I uh, ended up getting this. You can kind of see it here, and man, I was just so happy because instantly it was just such a cool color to mix with the blue and everything else. It added a bit of something. I don't know, but... So, for a little tip there for you. If you got anything uh, <laughs> orange and yellow, put a bit of red in there, too. It does something. Uh, one of my favorite parts right here, just adding in all these highlights, just starts to make everything stand out. Starting to refine things a little bit. This is what I'm talking about, whereas before, it's just kind of a glob of color, but you just keep chipping away, putting these cool colors in, shading this and that, adding some highlights there, some shadows there, and things really start to come together, and you almost get a bit more excited where the time just seems to fly by because you get lost in your own work. Here's another one of my favorite parts of painting is doing anything glass-like or shiny or metal. Just putting all these sheens and, and reflections and everything. You, what you want to do is make this as contrasty as possible too. That's how you get the really shiny vibes. Like really darks and then really, really lights. And then you put these little streaks in. I'm using a really fluffy big brush for that stuff because it seems to blend nice. Here's a little tricky part too actually because I knew I wanted the bottom of this painting to be really dark. So I didn't want to see too much, but just enough. But the problem is, even if you're putting like just enough in like this wheel here, if it's in the wrong spot, it's just going to throw everybody off. So I had to really think about <laughs> where that where that back tire would actually be, especially with this bizarre uh, camera angle I wanted. This I call it the heroic angle, where you're looking up at him like he's like something special's about to go down. Like, oh man, this king's walking in. So there's a little tip for you. you. Want something to look extra special, extra important? Have a camera looking up at him. If you have a scene where you want your character to look more vulnerable, like he's like, "Oh no, where is this guy? Oh no, there's a monster here. Oh no!" Always have the camera kind of looking down at him. It adds a whole cool new dynamic to the scene you're making. It's all about those camera angles. So you can get some pretty dramatic stuff just based on where you're looking. So here's another part I really enjoy about these, especially cityscape paintings, is these background things where it's just a whole lot of blooming lights and reflections and just a bunch of colors when you really look at it. But if you kind of squint or stand back, you're like, oh, yeah, like your brain almost tricks you into going like, oh, yeah, there's signs and cars and whatnot back there. And this is really cool just because you could really turn your brain off every few minutes, kind of step back a bit get a bigger picture view, be like, oh, I could use a little red there, oh, I could use a little blue there, maybe some more highlights. You can, when you, it's especially when you stand back, you can see what parts are missing. When you're all up close, you kind of zone in on little things, and you're, uh, lose, you lose the big picture a little bit. So here I am trying to detail the whole background here. And this is cool, because originally I was just going to put random video screens up there with just mindless stuff up there. But uh, the more I sat and thought about it, I was like, wow, wouldn't it be cool to just put a bunch of my old paintings up in there? Kind of make a big montage, like an homage to this whole Fluco universe that I've been slowly building over the years. And it's kind of neat too, so anyone who has like some of these posters and stuff in the room, if you grab this one as a poster, it almost ties in your whole other room because it's got those in it too. Anyway, just one of these little things that I was like, oh man, I'm so glad I thought to do that because uh, now I just love this whole painting even more. And it was really, really nostalgic for me, actually, to go back and repaint some of these. Like, I had my Instagram open. I'm going through all these old paintings, choosing which ones I want to do. And to just repaint them, even though it's in this small little square, like, it really brought me back. Because just like with any painting, you're kind of in a certain headspace when you make it. You're in a certain mood for the certain months of certain years and things. So it just really brings you back. Art's cool like that, how it can connect you. Just like music, how you, f you hear your favorite song of back in the day. You have all these memories that come back. So some of these, as I'm doing, I'm just like, wow. You just kind of get flooded with memories. But it's all cool. It's all part of this fun painting thing. Oh, so here's a little thing I, uh, I noticed I do a lot where I can use my fingers sometimes and I do a bit of blending. But the secret is if you have too much paint on there <laughs> and you go to do that with your finger, oh my god, you are just going to smear everything all over the place and ruin it. So you can only really do that if you have just a tiny, tiny bit on there. Just detailing these backgrounds again. I love it too because you start to put some hard edges on these rough shapes. Next you know things just start to really come together and pop and look all planned out and nice. See I'm putting some highlights in here. Bringing this uh, cab door to life. The thing with this taxi cab thing, I didn't really plan on the door being so big in frame. 
until like you step back and you look like ooh that door's pretty big so I couldn't just get away with it just being some solid color because that's boring so I'm like alright well if this cab door is going to be this huge I gotta put some really cool shading on here and make it look sweet here's the here's a tedious bit all the little lights trying to put in there sometimes I'll do a little trick um, if I'm working on a smaller painting I'll actually use a toothpick to go put in all the little lights but luckily this painting is huge enough I'm just using my regular old brush at this point too I haven't figured out what paintings I wanted to put up here I wanted to wait till I actually had this roughed in first and that's when I kind of sat on the couch went through all my paintings just kept looking up going what would fit what would fit here I was also trying to choose some paintings that I knew had some color schemes that kind of went with what's going on here because if I did something too drastic it would just stand out too much like I didn't want people to stare at those screens back there because it's all about my guy right now it's all about Astro dude so had to keep things pretty neutral back there while still keeping them cool just always remember when you got your painting you kind of want like a hero subject in there something to draw your eye to so if you have too many things going on it's like everybody yelling at once you don't really hear what anyone's saying because they're all yelling you just want one guy to yell and you're like oh, okay I see what's going on that's kind of like uh, my main dude here he's the guy yelling <laughs> so you don't want your background to be too loud basically is what I'm trying to say one of my classic paintings here gone fishing this one and uh, Fish and Trip, two uh, paintings of mine that I probably sold the most prints of, which is just wild. Because a lot of people out there like fishing as much as I do. This one was funny. I remember um, painting this, and this is like years and years and years ago now, which is wild to even think about. It seems like yesterday. But I remember painting this, posting it on Reddit, went to a Blue Jays baseball game. Didn't think anything of it, came back, and I'm like, oh my god, this thing's up to like 80,000 upvotes or something, this is just wild. All these comments, I'm watching my Instagram grow. This is back when you could still kind of do that with Reddit, now things are just so moderated, and that yeah, I don't know, it's just a different place. I got in at the right time on that type of social media, that's for sure. I gotta thank my buddy Chris, too, for these shots, they look so cool. He uh, works in film and had a really sweet camera laying around the place. So he's like, yo, you should, while you're filming with your GoPros and stuff, let me use this sweet camera and I'll get some like documentary type shots. I was like, what? Let's do it. Ended up being the best shots of this whole video where I'm like, God damn, I should have uh, got you to just film this entire thing. I think it would be pro. Ah, luckily these GoPros are good enough. Especially for these... Um, time lapses. I spend so long on these things I needed a camera that could just roll for hours and hours because I don't stop. I don't really take breaks other than if I have to wait for a background layer to dry or something. I'm sure as wild seeing these things painted in fast motion though. It's like, wow, it's like human printer. Oh, uh, here we go. I thought it'd be neat. Uh, put my acoustic album cover up here just like it would be in Times Square or something. It's nice to imagine being somewhat famous. <laughs> Spent a, like two years on that acoustic album too. So just seeing that cover just still makes me feel a certain way, you know? When you spend that much time on something. It's kind of funny too, I uh... Only after I was filming this section I went back and looked and realized at some point... Uh, you can see it here if you look at the fire. Oh, you see me trying to fix it? Yeah, my hand just smeared across the whole thing. Didn't notice until it was already dry and everything. I was like, ah, all right. Fix that. Here's another cool little monumental painting, for me anyways, that I was putting in here where uh, this was actually the cover of my first art book, which I'm so proud of. Always wanted something like that. I figured, like, at the time that this came out, it's like, man, I've been doing this for years and years and years. So many paintings. I for sure have enough for a book. Sure enough, I like more than enough for a book. The fun thing about that painting is, uh, so I painted this thing for the cover, and I'm such an idiot, I painted it backwards, as if the book opened the wrong way. I was like, ah, it's the only one I would finish too. I was like, oh man, you know when you really look at it, you're like, I did not do that, did I? I did. Uh, I painted it backwards. So the actual painting and the book cover, they're actually flipped. I had to flip it. Ended up working out anyways. It's still cool. I just couldn't believe I did that. Just, my mind wanders sometimes. Oh, <laughs> uh, here we go. Had to put this one in here, Fishing Trip, my, um, without a doubt, my most sold print and poster. I'm always getting sent photos of these, this 
poster up in people's dorm rooms and bedrooms and everything. It's so cool. Just another painting, too, that I, I remember I had no plan for that one whatsoever. I just, one day, I was like, I just wanted some fun. I just want to paint, put on a cool fantasy movie or something, just sit, zone out, make something. Somehow came up with this. Zero plan for it whatsoever. And I don't know what it is. I think I just had so much fun making it, going crazy with the colors and everything. And it ended up just being my number one painting for some reason. Like, it's the one everyone wants. It's the one that blew up the most. And it's the one that I literally had the most fun with. So I think there might be some correlation there where people can just feel when you made something from the heart and you were really, like, vibing with it, you know? Kind of catching lightning in a bottle with this one. Where I'm so glad I decided to sit down and make this the one day because you paid my bills for a little bit. <laughs> Here's another one of my favorites called Crossroads. Another one where I just sat down and was like, I'm just going to have fun today. No plan, no nothing, just made it. And it also ended up being a really uh, popular one. Pretty loose looking, I think that's why people like it. Then you can't go wrong with avatar colored looking forests and portals and everything. It's just nice on the senses, especially with these uh, neon type colors. It gives me arcade vibes, which I just love. Another one that was just super nostalgic for me to repaint again. Because once I make these things, I just put them up and that's that. I move on. I don't think too much of it. So to go back and redo them again, it uh, it's really cool. This one I believe I'm doing here is Dreamer. This is wild because a lot of people actually get fluke art tattoos, which I still can't believe that people like my art enough to have them tattooed. And it's not just like a couple people. Like, <laughs> that's another thing. At least once a week, I'm getting someone asking me if they could get it tattooed. I'm always like, yeah, man. Are you kidding me? That's awesome. They're like, what can I send you? I'm like, send me nothing. It's just insane to me that you're getting this tattooed. It's mind boggling. Someone out there, uh, a really cool person, sent it to me. This tat this painting in particular, they had tattooed on their entire thigh. Like the full-on color and everything. Like they're, like they're half their whole leg. Stuff just blowing up. Because when I'm sitting painting these things, that, n that never crosses your mind. You're just going, I'm having fun. I'm making something cool today. Thought of a cool color scheme. Think I'd try it out. You'd never think someone's going to be like, Wow, I love that. I want that on me forever. <laughs> If I knew that was going to happen, I probably wouldn't even paint because the, the pressure from that would be crazy. So it's just a pretty wild afterthought that these things happen. Here's where I figured uh, some of these buildings were getting a little square. So I was like, let's round some of these things off, add some variety in here. This part's always really cool to me. I don't know why. I It's always the last thing I do, too, on my astronaut, I noticed. I don't know why I do this. I just do. I paint the entire thing, and then I put his mask on. Because I really like to, especially if it's close up like this, and he's facing the camera, which I don't always have him doing. I really love painting the reflection and everything in there. And There's just something so satisfying about just putting that initial black outline on, where it just cleans everything right up. Once again, thanks to my buddy Chris for filming this part. It looks so cool. Just getting some blues in there. These you want like a medium-sized brush, I guess, so you get some nice blending going on. It's another one where you really got to work it, because the second you put some black in there, oh man, it just takes over. So you just got to, uh, I guess, be a little sparse with that, knowing that black goes a long way. Trying to work on these reflections now. This is kind of bizarre too, because you almost have to like, in your mind, stand back and be like, what would actually be reflecting in there? Because you can't really just put just anything in there, because it'll, the human eye and the brain is really crazy. It just knows if something's wrong. So you got to at least get it half kind of what it would be, I guess. But that's the fun part. Like I said, it's all a sculpture. If it's not right, you know, it's not the end of the world. You just work at it. It's the best part about paint. You can just paint right over it. Start it again. Not a big deal. This is where I'm putting in some pure white because that just makes things just pop right out. Gotta love that contrast. 
It's crazy too, I never went to art school or anything, but everyone's always telling me, teachers tell them like, don't use white, don't use black. I'm like, what are you talking about? I use it all the time, it's, it's only when I add those in, it starts to look insanely cool. So, who cares what someone else tells you what to do? Do whatever you want, do what you think is cool. Or else you just look like everyone else, sound like everybody else, do your own thing. It goes with music, anything, do your own thing. That's what makes it cool. Here we go, just refining some edges. Get some more highlights in there. This part, I remember going like, whew, you really gotta brace yourself. You're doing some big old checker pattern or something where you just know it's gonna take forever. This is kind of funny, you can see here, I'm like, okay, I give up on that. I'm just gonna put a bunch of lines in. <laughs> Trying to get all nice, I'm like, okay, you know what, let's just speed this up. This is very satisfying to watch too, watching all these checkers just get filled in like I'm a robot. If it were up to me, there'd be checkers in every one of my paintings. I just love that 80s checkered floor nostalgic vibe that a lot of early 3D animation was using because you couldn't really do much else to show depth, so you had to put a checkered floor in there so you could actually get the 3D effect. It's just I don't always have the patience for this. I just knew this painting was going to be special and I was filming, so I'm like, oh, okay, we'll do something wild for this. This is where I'm trying to put some shading in here now so it's not so flat. Add some white to the left side, kind of blend it in. Give the impression that the door is actually swinging open on some lights. Get some sheens across there. Work in these highlights. One other one of my favorite spots too. Just making the uh, helmet look all shiny and reflective. Really helps it stand out too from the background, which is something you want. So I bust out the skinniest brush I got. I swear there's like two hairs left on it. highlights on this door. Like I said, I knew if this door was taking up this much space, it's like, oh, I better make it the best door ever. <laughs> Here we go adding in some more blue, bringing out some more contrast in these windows, making them more glossy and reflective looking. Ties the door in with the background too with these blues. This painting's pretty much getting down to the end now. I remember just standing back when it was about done and I was just going, whoa. So glad I filmed this, because I love it. Love how it turned out. I think that's about it for this painting now, too. That was all the details. I might have added some more in after, but uh, that's pretty much it. I uh, hope you guys had fun watching this. I've never really done one where I did narrating or anything before. It's always just music, make it a calm, chill thing. But it was kind of fun to talk and narrate and reminisce about what I was up to. And uh, if this does well, I'll obviously make some more for you guys. So have a great day, and thanks for watching, everybody.